Welcome back to PazPod, episode uh, 11. Phil, how are you feeling? Good, good. Weather's been better. And uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a relatively quiet week on the work front, so in a great place. <laughs> nice. Are you uh, looking forward to your, your golf day tomorrow? Yeah. Obviously, when this comes out, we'll be sort of beginning our third round, I think, of the day. Um, yeah, it's going to be a long day, but we're we're all looking forward to it. In <laughs> in in essence, it's a early start, late finish, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully ten off around the first group. Hopefully ten off around about five thirty, um, and then just getting done. So we our final tee off is at four thirty, and then just getting that done as quick as possible, basically. Yeah. How did you get around the uh, the the bad light in the morning situation? Have you got globals or? No, we think we should be okay. So, uh, nautical twilight, which which provides a certain level of sight, uh, is around about four five forty. So, if you tee off at five thirty, okay. you'll have a bit of vision. We've all got like a few yellow balls and stuff. We looked at getting glow in the dark balls, but we didn't trust any of the brands that were being sold on Amazon. <laughs> Fair enough, might as well just go with what you have. Um, people can still donate to that. We'll get the link up one last time. Um, yep. We'll, yeah, we'll keep that, that link will still be available for a couple of weeks afterwards as well. Yeah, so yeah. And payday's coming up, so if you can't afford to donate then, you will be able to by the time it goes down. Um, <laughs> so last week we. We're quite bad at quizzing each other on rugby. Um, I think we got one right out of six, didn't we, between us? Which yeah. Is, uh, pretty, pretty poor. But we're going to have another crack at it. Um, I've got three questions which uh, I don't think as difficult as guessing how fast someone ran by a hundredth of a second. Um, so do you want to crack on with your first question or do you want me to give you questions first? I'll, I'll do my first question. It's a classic rugby noise question. Um, who was the last country to win a rugby 15 aside gold medal? Oh, not much of a noise. Oh, and I need to give you multiple choice, don't I? Otherwise, quite difficult. Uh, um, <laughs> England or UK, USA, Samoa or New Zealand? Oh, well, I was going to go. The US of A, but probably not. Um, I'm going to Kiwis. Incorrect. Um, it was the USA in 1912, I believe. Talked myself out of it as well. You did. You did. Terrible. If you had told me 1912, I might have got the answer. Yeah. Be. Anyway, um, my first question, a bit easier. Who is England's top try scorer? Is it Rory Underwood, Will Greenwood, or Ben Cohen? Oh, it's Rory Underwood. Yeah, by about 11. Yeah. yeah. By about 17, sorry, but not by 11. You're 49. You know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had a clue about that until I heard it the other day. It was on something the other day about Rory Underwood scoring those tries. Oh, was it? Yeah. Because uh, I know Greenwood and Ben Cohen both got 31. But yeah, he got 49. Because one of the Underwoods has played for Fabius, but I'm not sure which one. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Fun. Yeah. Um, question two. Question two. Which of these countries has played in a Rugby World Cup final but never lost? New Zealand, Australia, France, South Africa. Trying to think. All right, okay. Rule Aussies out. That was easy. Uh, I think I can probably rule ever. Probably rule the Kiwis out. Maybe South Africa? Correct. Sad. The two times they've been in the final, the two times they've won it. Nice. So it's. Uh, one or the minute, but you've got a, a question in hand. Um, which country performs the Sipi Tau 
before a game? Is it Samoa, Fiji or Tonga? Well, that's absolutely genius, isn't it? <laughs> you, you've been out there on tours. You said that there was lots of people doing different war dances last week. Yeah, that was that was that was in that was New Zealand. Um, and there could have been other Pacific Islanders there. I don't know. I think it's Fiji because I'm guessing. You're guessing it's uh, it's not it's Tonga. Oh, it's out. Yeah, which in English is war dance. <laughs> uh, okay, what year did the sport of rugby union officially turn professional? 1990, 1993, 1995, or 1987? I don't like how you've gone up in order and then gone back. That's what. Yeah, I don't either, but there's a panic. That's, that's annoyed me. Um, I'm going with that one not being right. Um, I know we were quite late to the party. I'm going to say probably 93. It's 95. Balls. Ridiculous. Still one all. So this is for the win. This is for the win. Right? Tom hurriedly changes his question and makes it impossible. <laughs> no, no, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What size shoe was Jane alone with? No. Um, Where is... <laughs> Which English player played football for Sheffield Wednesday's Academy alongside Jamie Vardy? Was it Danny Kerr, Owen Farrell, or Mark Tyndall? Three men born in Yorkshire there, so I made it a little bit more difficult as well. Played football mm. for who? Sheffield United? Wednesday, sorry. For Wednesday. I mean, it's not Mike Tyndall, is it? Look at him. Um, he doesn't look like him, and he's quite a bit older. And he's, he's quite a bit older than J.B. Vardy. Yeah, um, that when I read that one down, if I'm honest. I mean, just through personality and partial scumbaggery, uh, I'm going with Owen Farrell. It was actually Danny Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Kerr looks like a, a footballer. He's quite bothered about his appearance, isn't he? Yeah, no. Yeah. I was just thinking about the character. I likeness. Supposedly, there was three in the Prem that had football talk trials. So there was Danny Kerr. There was a friend of friend of the show, Alex Lewington. Lewington, so um, I was Lewington good at football, didn't he? And Lewandowski as well, I think had trouble oh, yeah. at Arsenal, and he played with Harry Kane. Oh, fun, there you go. Fun times. Um, talking about people that have played for lots of clubs, shall we uh, <laughs> get into talking to Sam Ward? Let's. Let's. Um, he got quite emotional at some point. Watch out if you can see the tears coming into his eyes, because um, we didn't, and he notified us, and then we kind of took piss out of him a little bit more for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, a, a bottle of red wine does do that to some people, so that's uh, it's yeah. absolutely fine. We've all been there. Supposedly, his uh, missus said afterwards that you, you waffled on a bit <laughs> to him. Tell Sam we waffled, which is... Uh, we can back that up, um, and as editor, I can also back that up, and he did waffle a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into it straight away, um, and then we'll catch up after. Yeah. So uh, we're here with the social media wizard, Sam Ward. Uh, he's got quite a large rugby CV, but Sam, how are you doing? All right, chaps. How are we doing? Great to see yeah. you, mate. Good, Hello, good. Um, so uh, some people will know you, some people won't. So Sam, can you just give us a brief introduction to you and uh, a bit about your rugby life as well? Just a short one. A short one, wow. Well, well, I've only just, well, not even 28 yet, and I, I've been at a few clubs. I'm a bit of a club whore, I must admit. Um, so, yeah, uh, started off at Pavius when I was four years old. I started off in 
uh, Doug Billum, Joe Collingham's age group, and I went all the way through the minis and juniors ranks. I was playing upper age group, so then I came down again. At this time, my brother was still playing for Pavia, so my dad was coaching my brother. He went off to play cricket. He was on the not seen at cricket, so my dad came and coached me. We had Richard Hatton, Sam Marsden, some really good players in that team. Uh, Josh Peck, um, and yeah, carried on going up. Uh, got some minis and juniors, played knots, played the Pavia scene, all the senior teams. Kind of fell out of rugby, three years away from rugby. Eventually got chatting to Eric Cramno, dragged me over to Ollerton, got me back involved with rugby. Um, I had three, fol- three solid seasons with Ollerton, which I loved. Um, went and took a, like a player coach role at Ashfield. It was only for six or seven months, didn't really work out. But learning curves, met some good people there. Uh, done, went back to Ollerton. I was still am helping out with Worksop. Some really good stuff, what's happening there. Trying to get the minis and juniors back going there. Trying to rebuild the club. It's in, it is in a bit of a mess and it's sad times, but... We are getting somewhere and obviously I'm back to Pavia's and I've never been happier with rugby at the moment because I'm glad I've went to play for other clubs but happiest I've ever been was coming back. I just remember seeing Nathan for my first session. Oh God, I just like being back home but especially um, seeing they're on Rossing ground in full sunset. Really lovely. Yeah, a bit of a brief one from me. It is a bit brief. Yeah, I've been around the uh, the block a bit and you still got some fingers in a fair few rugby pies around uh, around yes. the area but um, I mean that's because you're you're passionate about the community game and and what have you um, which is which is good to see it is it is nice to hear because it's easy to be very just kind of self club um, but it, it is good to see Phil do you remember the first time you encountered Wardy at all or do you try and forget that? <laughs> I probably coached him age group. Yeah, you did. I did, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that would have been probably one of my first years at age groups. I think Sam's three years younger than me. So, yeah, when I got back from uni, I would coach Sam. Um, and then um, you did kind of disappear relatively soon after that. Um, but, you you know, you never disappeared from the club entirely. You'd popping up again and again. Um Good solid player when he was younger. I remember seeing him play a few times. Um, never really got a chance playing too much first team at Pavs, and therefore I think that's my been what put you off rugby for a bit. Um, but then, yeah, when you went to Wallerton, um, everything seemed to start up for you again, and we were glad to have you back. Sort of mid-season last season, I think it was you rocked up for your first training session. Yeah, yeah. It was only about eight of us at that session as well. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I made you play that horrendous fitness game as well. So if you if you have to stay around after that, we're glad to have you back. <laughs> it is it is nice having you around the club because obviously I mean we're good pals anyway. So those who don't know I do have actual friends as opposed to just virtual ones. Um, we do work quite closely on a little bit to do with to do with the club, but something you'd never told me about, and I'm not sure many people know this, Sab, but um, as well as obviously your day to day job and your jobs within work, I didn't know you was a music producer. Um, Josh Peck told me you were a music producer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know what he's on about. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to kind of who? What do you know? Uh, well, yeah, we were well, trying to think how old we were. It was 19. It's the famous photo of me, John T and Pecky. Where we're the, we've got the, the hoodies on, looking dead cool. Lock up your daughters. Like, we're on the prowl. Uh, we, is this the... We, the, this we the didn't get near any, We was terrible. Um, but, um, so, anyway, we went to the walkabout bar in Newquay and got absolutely hammered. Uh, in there, everyone's on there. And I just... I had a bit of liquid courage and it was just banned on it. I thought it was amazing. So anyway, I went I went to like the, the, the bouncer. I was there, like, I want to talk to the guitarist. I want to talk to the guitarist. And anyway, the guitarist came over, he was Argentinian. And uh, I think his name was like Pablo or something like that. I can't remember. He looked like uh, 
<laughs> Tom Keeney, who played for Newcastle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I went, I kind of like, just went, I just winged it. I just said, look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a, I forgot, I'm a band manager and I'm trying to promote local bands in the area. Can I come talk to you backstage about signing a deal? I think you're brilliant. And he was like, see, 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 come on, come on. <laughs> so anyway, as they were all going backstage, I was following them. I just remember looking at Pecky and my dad and Pecky Senior, they were all there like, what's he doing on stage? And they're like, <laughs> so, <laughs> got all the way backstage and like gave me a beer, started talking to him, didn't even speak to him about, signed him up to a band. And uh, next minute, the lead singer just went, who was that guy? And I went, I shouldn't be here, lads, but I'll tip my beer anyway. I just legged it out quick. <laughs> so, yeah. That's and then the uh, bouncer got me by the scuff of net and chucked me off the stage, and I was back with my family. And that was it. I've been to a New York walk about a few times. I was in there with uh, an ex England pro rugby player, and he was. Uh, extremely hammered and I've never heard someone chat so much bollocks in my life. Was it me? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you. It was, uh, I, won't, I won't tell you. Um, but he has, a, he has a World Cup winning medal, but that's all I'll give. Um, was this trip down to Newquay the same one where, is it that picture where you, you all look like you just come back from playing Dungeons and Dragons or something? In between us, like literally. me yeah, and me. We all thought we were lady killers, but we were nothing. We were terrible. Absolutely. Looking back on it, we, like Pecky was wearing his dad's fleeces for God's sake, and we weren't getting anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, and yeah, it's a famous story when Pecky got stuck between the two seats of the Allerton fun bus, and we're trying to worm out of it and start panicking and start crying, shouting for his mum and dad. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one where you were so? Was it the Lord of the Ring? We talked about this on Josh's podcast. Yeah, it was a uh, Jaunty's. So uh, this is where we got the um, the shit Lord of the Rings game. Oh, S bomb, sorry. Um, we got the Lord of the Rings game. We had a Lord of the Rings music on instead of going out and getting bladdered with our dads, which we should have done anyway. But, yeah, we we uh, yeah we were quite boring kids when we were younger. I think we <laughs> up a little bit. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank God for puberty. I think we've improved. We've improved. They were 19 then. I know. It's scary. <laughs> I don't, as much as I love you and, and Josh, and well, I d don't love John T, but as much I as I love you all now, I mean, I don't think we would have been friends at school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Like, if it weren't for rugby, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have spoke ever, like me, John T, and Pecky. So. Good, good memories, boys. I loved, uh, like, I like went to Florida when I was a kid with my mum and I'm just those sort of holidays that I remember the most just because we were just giggling all the time and you actually spent time with each other, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah. Deep, deep, but... so, I mean, so I am slightly intrigued about, you did mention you uh, kind of resembled the in-betweeners. Between you, Josh and Johnny, who was who? Out of the in-between is. Oh, that's a good one. That's, I, oh, I don't know. I'd say I was Jay because I've just. We were out. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you got yourself behind backstage saying you was. Uh, I'd say I was Jay. That's so, yeah, you're Jay. Um, Josh is uh, probably Neil, isn't he? I don't know. And then Johnny's yeah. got to be Will. Johnny's Will, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah 100. <laughs> Heck, is he? He, he, Simon, he does have in some embarrassing moments, like with his ankle at the weekend. You are like, oh, sort gosh. of the event and the last play of the game. That sprained <laughs> ankle, lad. <laughs> 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 All right, like yoga. It's bad for you. <laughs> so, at the end of the, the final of, say, my team got to the final of the touch rugby and Josh was on it. And you know that scene in Family Guy where Lois falls over and she just breathes really heavily on the floor? That's all, all Josh was doing was on his back. He was like, oh. You should have seen, uh, should have seen <laughs> Pecky Senior. You should have seen Pecky Senior's reaction. He was just like, oh, what a tit. <laughs> oh, he's just there like, drinking up. I've got to take him to hospital now. <laughs> like, Steve, here's your study now. Like, you should 
maybe show a bit of will in. <laughs> yeah, he is. He what, is. Do you what do you expect? <laughs> so, uh, you said you had quite a good age group and you did drop some um, big names when, when playing, but so who, who was it that you played with most and who do you remember playing with? Um, I'd say it was in the middle, chaps. Um, I, I played with Doug, Doug and Joe's age group till I was under 10s. And then that's where they were all getting a lot bigger than me because I was playing a year up. I don't believe for one second that Dougie got bigger than you. He was, Not honestly. For one. <laughs> he was. He had a massive squeeze. I've got a, pic- I got a picture of him when he was younger, his head's like that. I think he just grew into it somehow. He <laughs> did <laughs> through a period. Like you went through a bar- period of being one of those football statues you used to get in cereal packets yeah. with a massive head and a tiny little one. <laughs> he had like a Bart Simpson head. He had a Bart Simpson head. He was dead along. Like. <laughs> <laughs> There was Doug, there was Joe, Tom Hobbs, Josh Hall, uh, uh, Will Maudsley. There were some amazing players in that team. But the one that my own age group was really good. We had Richard Hatton, uh, Sam Marsden, Simeon Small, Josh Peck, uh, Ben Hubble, uh, and Martin Bates. We had really, really, really good age group, Harry Bill. And th- th- this is what kind of my first reaction of like falling out of love with rugby because we had such a good age group and I think we, the only team what could beat us in the in the in the three counties was Derby and they went three years unbeaten they were national champions three years on the bounce and we we drew with them once I think in like a cup final or some uh, semi-final and the beaters had extra time um, we went toe to toe and we just never beat them which was sad but when we went to the Nottinghamshire scene, even though we used to pump Newark every week by 60, 70 points, and Mansfield would put 30, 40 points past Newark, they had Newark coaches as the NLD, as the Notts and LD coach, so they picked 12 Newark players. Us, as the best team in Notts, they picked five house players, and Mansfield who stuffed Newark as well, they only picked three of them. And at the time, the, the head coach of the Nottinghamshire scene, his dad was the nine. His dad, at the nine of the dad at Newark, was the coach at Nottinghamshire. So I didn't even get a look in for like NLD or anything because of that, because it just didn't get picked. And I'll never forgive rugby and coaching for that ever, ever. It's really like annoys me, but just one of those things. Yeah, it's a strange. Um... I always found it quite an odd thing that some some age groups were affected by that. My age group um, actually had Newark coaches as well, thinking about it. But they were there wasn't that many Newark players in the team. Although the Newark team at my age group were by far and away the best team in the area. Um, but they were relatively even. But when we got to NLD... It was, happened to be the Nottingham Academy coaches at my age group. So um, at under 15s, it was it was a Nottingham Academy coach and this random bloke from the West Midlands, um, Andy Johnson. I'm not sure what he's doing now. He was coaching Mosley a year or so ago. Um, yeah. and, and that selection was quite fair. Um, I mean, I, I was unbelievably lucky, and you know, my whole rugby career has basically come off the back of the fact that after two games I got my trial for the Knots team and then just because I was so big and relatively athletic they'd just take me on up and up and up until we got to sort of under 16's England trials um, which is when I sort of didn't make the England team so it, it's, it can be horrendous and I remember a lot of lads you know who you play with especially in the Pavia's team. Pavia's didn't get much of a look in at all yeah. at my age group. I thought, oh, well, so-and-so is better than that. Yeah. Or, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. I, I, was, I was really bitter, Phil, yeah. that the players like Josh Pegg, Richard Hatton and Harry Bill, like, they never even got a chance to play for Nottinghamshire but just because of selfishness of coaches. And just, I'm, I'm always bitter and that's why I like always giving Newark a good thump in now because of, just because of that. And obviously the, the, the rivalry goes deeper than that, but mm. it's just 
just because of those situations. But yeah, it was it was a sad time, and I think that's where my head really went. Do I need that? Yeah. And then, and then obviously, what you were saying, going up to the first team, difficult, and then obviously more disappointment. I went, oh fuck this! So I'm getting drunk and going out with me. It's mint. So hindsight yeah. and all that. I wish I stuck at it. So. I mean, it's making if you can make that decision ten years, knowing what could happen at this time, it, it's completely different, isn't it? But things like that do actually put off people. Luckily, rugby's managed to keep kind of a, a semi hook on you to bring you back in, but it does put people off rugby for for life. And it's just it's more put all this effort in and and what have you. And it's always been something I have found odd. Rival, rivalries are uh, odd anyway. They often stem off either location or nothing. It often, it often stems off the fact that you're close or you've always been challenging for the title with each other or there was a fight or something like that. And I've never, I've always understood senior rivalries and I've often kind of understood cults and lower level rivalries. But when it comes to the fact of, well, Newark, a coach in the NLD, so Nottinghamshire, so that's all they're ever going to, they're going to pick the majority of Newark. It's, yeah. In hindsight, I just look at it and I just go, well, why are you doing that? Because actually you're not damaging, well, you're damaging Nottinghamshire, but actually you're damaging rugby as a whole. Yeah. Is the problem people see at rugby, and I mean supporters of rugby see it as well, is it's it's a boys club. And if you're in yeah. that boys club, that's what it is. And and if, that, if that's at that age group as well, then no wonder you got fed up and decided to walk away. It's just a little bit of honesty though, Tom, because... I blatantly said there that Mansfield was better than Newark as well. We we had we had some really good battles with Mansfield at our age group, and they only got three players in the not squad. And one one of them was Fordy, James Ford, Tom Lowry, and Bradley Eames. Uh, Bradley Eames, who he uh, sadly died not a few years ago, bless him. But they didn't they didn't even get any more than three, and it was really really biased, and awful. And that I do think NLD should vet that a lot more because it does happen big time. Hmm. Does it yeah. now? Do we know? Or... I mean, it's it's one of those things where, especially at the age group level, certain people will vie for the opportunity to coach it, hmm. um, and and those people will usually be linked to a club. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I don't think it's as bad anymore. What I've always thought is that you need it's, it's, it's renowned for being county schools so why yeah, not have yeah. a PE teacher coach it from some school um, and that's just things like that but you know it's, it's one of those things where a certain coach will oh, have an opportunity to coach the county I'll do that and they don't necessarily go in with the intention of putting all their players in mm. but they'll get so much pressure off parents from their club I would have thought yeah 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 I agree, oh, yeah, it must be I agree with that Phil definitely it would be absolutely horrendous. Couldn't be anything worse. Um, something that um, we, we've kind of not spoken about loads in the last few weeks, but I know you are one to... You like to be a bit of a tourist. Um, and you do like to, to venture across the English Channel. Um, so I know there's been some tours that you would have attended and some last weekends away. Um, one of the, the things a certain... Joshua has provided me. He's going to come up a few times in this interview, isn't he? <laughs> he will be. Um, only <laughs> it's, with you two, I always look at you like Bill and Ben. Like, it's quite hard to find one without the other too far away. Um, you're often close, especially in social events and stuff. Um, but Denmark. Oh. Two bought crate. Yeah, so... Uh... Uh, I, it, uh, I don't know. We were out. It was one of those things where, like, oh, we'll go to Copenhagen. It'd be really nice. Like, we'll do a load of sightseeing. We didn't. We just got absolutely blathered. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was one of those ten o'clock in the morning, breakfast, beer, boom, and uh, yeah, spent the full day in Copenhagen, drinking, drinking by the the canals. Beautiful place if you've never been, recommend it. It's not as expensive as everyone says. Um, loved, loved it. So anyway, we got in this bar, really cool place, and uh, I was the kitty holder. So I bought 
32 Borg. I think it was 32 bottles between six of us. And anyway, by the end of it, it was like two Borg. All right, beer, but 32 of them, like, kind of sick of it now. But before I went, I was like, fuck it. Bought another one. And I went, right, see you, lads. A bit drunk, so I'll leave you to sort that out. And um, apparently... I think it was left of three of them to drink 32 bottles of two borg and to be fair to them they did it they did, it. They did a good job <laughs> so, so you bought a it. crate of beer and moved away i would i did that was good scrum half work i thought <laughs> it's like a, a premium smoke bomb yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here goes. here this will see you off for the night i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah take care <laughs> it's, it's but this, than... this night though in my defence is how drunk I was I got completely start bollock naked and did the hacker in the middle of Copenhagen with all these like blonde lasses looking at me so who do you think you are do you think you're Liam Naylor Liam Naylor <laughs> and I'm going to go on record here Liam Naylor copied me because that's that was my party trick this is something Josh brought up as well this is something Josh was like asked about the late night hacker and where Naylor got it from so, <laughs> is it on hey, record? I'm saying this. So, the, the, the story is at school we had to do a dance because we were performing art school, and obviously I was a rugby player, so I thought, oh no, we'll do the hacker. So, we <laughs> had got, so you went to performing art school? No, I went to All Saints in Mansfield, you know, the, the school with it, that teacher hit that kid with a weight, that one. <laughs> no, I don't, I'm not even around here. Oh yeah, I remember. I know that story. Yeah, yeah. I'm aware so of that story. That's cool, <laughs> but it was a performing arts school. We had to do a performing arts, so drama, dance, music, and we had to do dance. So me, there was obviously me, Martin Bates, and a few other rugby lads in our group, and we just went, "Oh, let's just do the hacker. That would be dead easy." So we just watched a fuckload of uh, YouTube videos on the hacker. And we just did it in front of the whole school. Got a standing ovation, even better than some of the singers. <laughs> so it was awesome. And uh, so the story goes on. We went to tour in France when we was like 16. And we played a rugby team called Bompass, which is just outside of Perpignan. And uh, they were like singing the Le Marciers and like, like spine tingling like music. It was amazing. And then like, my dad just nudged me on the shoulder and went, go on then. Do what you need to do and then all four of us got up and we just did the hacker and then just went silent and then the next minute all english was like <laughs> i've got i've got a horrendous experience of that um i went on the nld tour to australia under 16s um and i don't think i don't think any of the pub lads were on it and basically the coach thought it'd be hilarious so we had a like initiate with we had this week long tournament and then Monday night was an initiation night so you went and you performed like something from your culture. So <laughs> we You've never been coach, coach, you know, it there. <laughs> our, our coach thought he was an absolute comical genius and basically said, Oh, I know what we'll do is is we'll do the the like we'll start a hacker and then turn it into the Macarena. Neither of which are English. <laughs> Neither of which are culturally <laughs> either. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we rocked up to this massive sports hall. I mean, like, so there was a hockey, a netball, a rugby, and a lacrosse tournament being held in this uh, overall tournament. So there was probably <laughs> about 2,000 people in this sports hall by the time it started and all these schools from like Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Ireland were all doing these quite culturally based songs or performances. <laughs> and I feel like we were last. I just feel like we were last. It was that one of things. And we were just like looking at each other like this this isn't good. Um, two schools <laughs> from New two schools from New Zealand had been up and done a proper hacker. So there was Orton oh. Grammar who were like one of the best best high schools in New Zealand yeah. they're under 16 team and uh, some scumbags from Otago um, <laughs> they're putting up under the proper hacker 
and we had one lad dressed in like a Tarzan robe at the front. <laughs> the rest of us arced around. Yeah. And we started this hacker and turned it into the Macarena, and it was like the worst thing. Like no one, like everyone had like applauded and like cheered everyone else off, and it just went silent when we finished. <laughs> and we all just walked off, walked off to the side, just being like, "Oh god, they're going to kill us." And they're actually. Gonna... And once again, the British Empire reaching out to New Zealand. Oh, it was horrendous. <laughs> the worst bit was there was an under sixteen tournament obviously what we were in and an under 18 tournament so not only have we like irritated everyone we were playing against we'd irritated the bigger boys as well <laughs> <laughs> you deserve what you get mate to be honest oh it was horrendous <laughs> you can just imagine the kiwi lads just sat around just going what on earth do they think they're doing <laughs> I'll wait what? I'll wait to play these guys <laughs> well, we played we played that Otago team first first game and we were quite a good team, to be fair. We had, you know, we got a few lads in there who played quite a high level, and it just, it was just a fight. Like I reckon, two minutes in, someone got punched, and there was a thirty-man brawl, and it just got worse and worse and worse from there. And then we played all conglomer, and they just, they was, I think, um, one of the current international wingers played for him. I can't remember what his name is, but um, yeah. He, they were unbelievable. They were so good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> they need to fight you to... Uh, no, they, they just walked all over us. That's <laughs> embarrassing, man. Why would you do it <laughs> in front of Kiwi? It was the worst thing. It, emotionally, at the end of it, we were all just like, kill me. Just kill me now. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah. Uh, Phil, can you get your package out, please? Um, I can. Lovely. Sam, I think you're an, uh, an avid viewer, so I don't need to explain to you. Please answer as fast as possible um, the, the, these very clean questions. Um, red or green? Green. Favourite beverage? Oh. Uh, don't put them on around there. Amarone, red wine. Is that the one that's right in front of you now? No, yeah, that's um, Rioja. Oh. Sorry, culture. When in Spain. Um, best player you have played with or against? Best player played with? Uh, natural ability, I've got to say, mom strength, Joe Collinham. Best player played against? Probably Rory Lynn. Ten. Wow. Yes. Wow. Very one player is Rory Lynn. He was in that Derby side I was telling you about. Ah. So they put me at 10 to mark him, and I did not get near him. Not once. Yeah, he was quite quick. Very good player. He played for Notts, didn't he? He played for Nottingham. Yeah. 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 Um, Favourite club? Worksop, Ullerton, Ashfield, or Pabs? Pavias. Um, Favourite opposition? Newark. For Pavias, it's always Newark. But I never, uh, I've never lost to Mansfield in a previous shirt, so I have to put them close second. <laughs> and of course, Jonty or Jim? Jonty. I don't think Jim likes <gasps> me, so I'll go Jonty. <laughs> Sorry. You... That's the end of this week's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a question to add on. Uh, Josh Peck or Daddy Peck? Oh, if he, oh God, before Burma, it's got to be Josh, got to be Josh, <laughs> can't, can't sell him like that, Becky. Something we've not, I, I know we've got a plan to have a few questions, but something that we've, we've not touched and it's just come to mind, um, is your dad. Um, <laughs> Dave, Dave. Dave. <laughs> Dave, I, was, I wasn't going to call him Dave, Dave, but. Um, oh, sorry, he's got a new name, Deutsch Dave, because of his German haircut. <laughs> Jim and haircut. Um, but how much has your dad had an influence on your rugby? Because if anyone's ever met your dad, you look at him and you go, rugby's the last sport you're going to want to play. Um, purely because his ankles don't look like they could hold up a cotton, but let alone <laughs> a human body for rugby. 
I've followed my rugby journey other than Ashfield is through through what like watching my dad and he's been the anchor through all of it. Um, the what? Sorry, like, he's been the anchor. Like oh, anchor, anchor. Yeah, anchor. yeah. Okay. definitely anchor. He's always just been there, he's supported me throughout. Always been. He was an amazing coach as well. My dad was. Uh, like I watched him at Ollerton when I was young. I watched him at Paviers. He was my coach. He's, even when I went to Ashfield, my dad watched me every single game, like every minute. He was always the first person I spoke to. I had I, I played, what I could have done better. He always gave me a very honest answer as well. And yeah, he was always there. Played, I played, had the pleasure of playing with him a few times on the pitch as well. So. You, so, you, so that good. relationship then, Sam, that relationship with your dad, and you come off the pitch and you talk to him. Mm. Is he... What's his first comment? Is it is it the, the the negative feedback or is it oh that was really good? What where does he go first? Ultra positive, my dad is. Ultra is he? Yeah, even wow. in life, he, he doesn't dwell on negatives, but he he was always a stickler for bad defence. If I if I miss a couple of tackles, be the that'd be the first thing he said. So that's <laughs> why I always like pride myself like tackle. Best you can, always. You, my dad's going to rip me about it. So he was always a stickler for my tackling. He always knew I could pass with both hands very well. So he was always just nail my defence. And, and in the end, I ended up a de- decent defensive player. I've just lost all my speed now. So I just can't really attack very well these days. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, is it, you see, that's what I love about the Pavius Ollerton thing. Everyone thinks my dad's a a massive joker, which he is, he tells the story better than anyone, but there is another side to my dad where a lot of people don't know. He's a very, very caring, very loving dad, so. Good, good oh, Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've witnessed that side of him, but that's mm. too much to dwell on. Um, he's got I, a sinister side as well, definitely. <laughs> yeah. he's, all, he's, he's as horrible as he is nice sometimes. <laughs> but do you, do you have that feel? Um, off the pitch, go and get your feedback straight away. Oh, I have to, like, I've got a really good relationship with my dad. Um, and, and, and spend um, a lot of time with him and force him to look after my kids. So, um, <laughs> I, owe, I owe him a bit, but um, I, 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 for those who don't know, after a game, especially home games, even though he has started travelling to most away games as well, I, I will come off the pitch or put on my, like, I, w- I won't get showered. I'll put on, like, my scruffs that I've turned up in, like, shorts and a T-shirt. I'll go straight upstairs, go to the bar, buy myself a pint and potentially my dad a pint if he needs one, and I will get his feedback there and then just so I don't have to deal with it later. I am... <laughs> <laughs> I go up, I give my wife and the kids a kiss if they're there. How are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Say hello to my mum if she's there. Dad, do you want a drink? Bar, sit down next to dad. And if we've lost, he'll he'll greet me with an eye roll. That it's, I, mean, I think you've probably seen it in the pair of you by now. The eye oh, roll. Yeah. Big time. That yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. and then. It'll be, oh, so and so's not done this, or you could have done this, or we can. And to be fair, nowadays it's not much about my performance, but the team as a whole, because me and Nathan are obviously coaches. Mm. It's the team performance as a whole. Um, if we win, he's normally got the beer there ready, and he yeah. would tell me how good it was, but what we could have been better at. So, yeah, yeah he, uh, it makes me chuckle because him, so obviously my dad's sort of the. Um, Phil Molyneux, that that sort of clan, Bob Chick, all those guys play together, um, and and they can't see that the game. Well, if they do appreciate the game's change, but they still think, oh well, just got you know, just got to stamp on him. And <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, you can't do it. Shoot him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I do have that with my dad, but my dad's always been very. Honest, I think is, and 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 I've appreciated, and I think you both are quite aware how 
honest I am in my feedback to people. Um, yep. So, yeah, is that something that... I mean, I remember sitting in the stands with him when I was about 16 uh, at Med Lane watching Nottingham and then turning to me and said, you could probably do this, couldn't you? And I was like... Oh yeah, thanks for the moral support. I'll uh, I'll crack on with that now. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it is, it, it is good coming off a pitch now, and you can look to someone. I mean, my dad doesn't live in Nottingham, and but I often veer towards Steve Beck or your dad if he's watching, or someone like that. Someone who I know is kind of knows the game, uh, yeah. so I can look over to and go. Uh, to be fair, Gaz Briggs and Chris Briggs are good for that as well. That's yeah. what I like um, but it is quite nice coming off and getting the instant feedback. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, moving on. Rugby memories. Yeah, so Sam, what is your worst rugby memory? Oh, worst rugby. Yeah. Difficult question. Um, the Nottinghamshire thing. That's a bad one. Let's, let's not go over that again. Let's... <laughs> a bit teary, isn't it? The, um, I would say one of my worst ones. Tom was there, uh, Ashfield, Ilkeston. Oh yeah. I, I went. I had the point to prove at Ashfield. Not point to prove. But there, there was a lot of. Um, I think they still have a nickname for me. Call him Messiah, uh, which I kind of didn't like. But I just wanted to go there and make the club better, and I tried my best while I was there. But anyway, we, we started off while I was there. The, the, the results did pick up. Uh, we had some really disappointing results before that. And we played Ilkeston at home against Buckos, Ilkeston. And we was, I think it was 4 uh, four nil, can't get 4 nil, uh, 5 nil down. And uh, someone's come off the ruck, and I was playing at 10. So I sprinted over, covered, tackled, and I uh, tore my hamstring, grade three tear. And uh, I've never really had a really bad, serious muscle injury. So that really hit home, especially because I had like a bit of a bean in my body. And I, I really wanted to prove some doubt was wrong. Just didn't work out in the end. And, and my coach at the time at Ashfield, he was a really good bloke. He put a lot of faith in me as well. And I kind of owed it to him as well. And to Ashfield, I, I wanted to like, help him be a better club. Um, yeah, that's probably my worst memory. Yeah. And another bad memory was with Doug Billum's team at Colts level, losing to Southwell in the cup final. And uh, I think it was Alex Berry, actually, uh, the, the Southwell back rower. He actually charged down my clearance kick and they scored under the post to win it. So that was that was probably the worst one, actually, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it terrible. It, 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 that was horrible because you were playing with some really, really good players there, upper age group against a very good Southall team, I have to put my hat, take my hat off to him. And to lose, disappointingly, it was at Sleaford, I think. And yeah, that was a bad memory. Yeah, that was probably the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just kind of an off-tangent question, but I mean, we spoke about Phil. Phil doesn't like watching rugby and couldn't care for it, really, unless he has to be involved. But would you... Something that I've never asked someone really. Would you, in a cup final sense, would you rather play and lose off something like your kick being charged down, or would you rather be injured and not play in that game? Um, it depends on my mentality at the time. If I was playing for Pavius now in a cup final, I would be relishing it. And in the cup finals I played with Ollerton, I loved it. Couldn't wait to be. And I actually went off with an injury in the, the cup final we won at Ollerton. I was gutted, like, I really wanted to stay on and get him over the line. But the Ashfield, and this is horrible to say, my head was up my arse. Like, I didn't know, did I want to be there? And if I'd, I'd probably rather, we was getting stuffed every game, and I was trying to like, do more than I should. I was making tackles what I shouldn't have been doing. And if someone said to me, um, do, you want to, do you want to sit this one out? I'll probably want to, yeah, go on then. But now, my mentality with this club, I would 100% play in it. The feeling you get from winning the cup final is just the best feeling in the world. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it is all, I, it, this is a typical cocky, pavious thing to say, but winning cups is, is, winning is a habit. Winning cups is a habit. And luckily, 
we're falling into the habit and we kind of know how to react on a cup day across all three, four levels or whatever. Um, what's your best rugby moment? The final of Allerton was one. Love that. Um, uh, yeah, without, without a shadow of a doubt. I think people know this one's come in. There's, so obviously I went to All Saints and all the way through school wearing a Pavies jacket, I just got picked on all the time by the Simcox brothers, Adam Shaw, <laughs> Ryan Huff, Gareth Gripton, Ryan Kroll. I just got beat up every day because they were all Mansfield and I was Pavies. It was a different age group, but again, it was for Doug, Doug and Joe's age group, and um, there was there was all over Facebook saying because it was a, it was a it was a county cup final at Mansfield, and they were they were out there to do a number on us, like we're going to stuff you and all this lot. We went there, and I think at half time it was sixty seven five, and we just they were walking off the pitch crying at one point. <laughs> Uh, Joe Crossland had like four of them. Yeah, that was on the Instagram the other day. I had like four of them trying to beat them all up. We just we just absolutely mullered them. I think I think it ended up in triple figures the the final score in the end. And Pat <laughs> Billen Pat Billen was like, "Do you want do you want a game? Do you want to you know, play on the back row before? You want to go on the back row? Yeah, go have a game. You'll get a try." <laughs> and we just absolutely mullered them and just just stuffed them at their place. That was amazing. Um. Oh yeah, I think that'll probably be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll probably be my me, me best rugby moment. Being a rival is was always something. To be fair, especially yeah. especially at there. But to be fair, as much as I love a lot of the Mansfield lads, I know. Them oh yeah, yeah, some great lads. Beating them, great. Up, beating them at their own place is someone else in a big game. So, Sam, you you obviously played um, at a few clubs within Nottinghamshire. Um, if not fifty percent of them. Um, so, so what was your experience at those clubs with sort of in in comparison to pubs? And what was the what was the perception of pavers at those clubs? Um, so obviously, the first one was Alton. I, I already had a, a deep. I wouldn't say a good rapport with them because obviously my dad played for him, but I knew a few of the members and um, a few of my brothers, good friends, played for him. Ollerton, Ollerton is a strange one for me. I love Ollerton Rugby Club and what it represents. If you like the socials and you'd like to learn to play rugby, you're in the best place in the world. It is a fantastic club. Do I think they could go one step further? Definitely. And that was one of, I wouldn't say I fell out with Ollerton, is one of my frustrations is they have an unbelievable team. If they train twice a week, they could easily make it to Midlands too. Easy. And they sure they're at the peak of Ollerton's ever been. And I do think that they've missed a little bit of a trick getting the minis and juniors going, which me and James Wiggle James Wiggles have tried to get going. We we did a few uh, did a few clinics, but they they they've got a, a market there because a lot of the Ollerton men, people from Ollerton go to Pavia's or Newark or Mansfield and it's a big, big old town and they, they could have really, they could really benefit from that and it would secure them because I just, I love that club so much and I'd hate it to go back to how there was five years ago when our thirds, you should steamroll them by 100 points when I just, I just hate that for that to happen. Got really good memories of Ollerton. Uh, and I can hold my head up high because I know honestly that I made, when I was coaching them, I made a hell of a lot of them better rugby players and I will always be happy about that. And I hope, I hope that they feel that way as well. Um, the Asheville thing was a weird one. Um, it was kind of a golden, it wasn't a golden ticket, but they, they promised so much Ashfield and, and I wanted to, because I was doing a lot of the coaching at Ollerton, I wanted to do the next step forward. I do all my coaching badges because it's something I really wanted to do. Like, mm -hmm. done all these coaches, won all these cups with teams, coaching. I'd love to have a badge or something to represent that. And Ashfield, yeah, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that. And then the head coach got me in there, really passionate bloke, Matt Gibson, top bloke, got a lot of time from one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. 
he taught me when I was speaking to you about it, Phil, he taught me like all the patterns of playing, like your one three three one and stuff like that. I was like, wow, this is really complex stuff, really interesting. If they really bought into Matt Gibson, I know they could have maybe stayed in Midlands too, but they ended up going down. Matt Gibson ended up going to Leicester Lions. Yeah, I think he's like their um, their match analysis bloke now, and I know for a fact he'll do really well. He's a pretty, he's a prickly character. Don't get me wrong, but very very knowledgeable rugby man. And he's similar to you, Phil. He like just loves rugby, a bit of a geek, watches videos all the time, watches patterns and different ways of the game, like where it's evolving. Rugby geek, top bloke. And and his his forwards coach Rob Taylor. Top bloke as well. Got so much time for him and his family. His, his wife was the physio as well. Um, Worksop is, is a strange one. Um, so I was working with John Wellen, the RFU coach development officer at the time. And he was working with Ollerton and Worksop. And this is the time where I just moved from back from Ashfield back to Ollerton. And uh, he was he was in Ollerton. And he was telling me, like, oh, yeah, I couldn't really do with some help at Worksop. So I went, yeah, yeah, can do. One thing that I've tried to help with is that the website and social media stuff, which is, it seems to be taking off a little bit. We just need to try and get the, um, the buy-in from, um, from the members. The, I wouldn't say the prickly customers, just setting the ways like they are used to doing something a certain way. And you know, when like you put something on social media for pages, like everyone's all over it, share it, like it, works up, need to get into involved in that because it's a really sad situation because it's a huge club, huge clubhouse. I think they've got four pitches if they, if they could utilise them, but they only have one team at the minute. I'm like, Jesus, like, if you've got the catalyst going there, it could be an absolute sleeping giant. So being a part of that and trying to get the minis and juniors going there, trying to get the members involved, is really, really amazing stuff. So, yeah, that, that is, and along the comparison of paths, my direction and coaching on the social media things and playing, I've always gone back to Pavius. That that is all it's like my Bible kind of thing, like being taught by Guru and like Steve Peck, like the morals of the game and uh, Dave Robbo, like your, uh, your brother Nathan Eggleshaw is a young lad. He was the captain. I'm like, right, what what captain, what player? Just, just little role models like that. Gareth Briggs, how he played the game, how passionate he was. Like I saw it on the first podcast. It Ed Button people in changing room. Like that passion is what I got from Paviers, and I hopefully I've put that stamp on other clubs. And that's probably where I'd probably leave it. Yeah, uh, er, everything in me rugby related is Paviers, and and Paviers is a successful club because it's got passionate members. So yeah, mm. that's where I'd leave it yeah some 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 good members and some good clubs I just I, I do wish that sometimes especially that works so I just I wish I'd just turn around and look at the facilities they've got and like clubs like Ollerton would kill for a clubhouse you know what I mean like Ollerton they're, they're, they're playing like a little um, village hall if they had a clubhouse what what was their own they would absolutely love that. One the time you've played there a few times. I was going to say, in Ollerton, uh, one of the only clubs I've been at who I've, well, it is the only club I've been at where I've not been a member or a play member of, where I've actually felt like that doesn't matter. You know, I went to Newark and I used to go away in Gillingham to like Mason, Canterbury and all these places. You'd go in, it'd be friendly, you'd have a pint, you'd chat, but it's all small talk. Wollaton hasn't got a clubhouse, for those who don't know, you just go around to the local pub. But actually, you go in there, and you're there, you're not there with your 15, 20 mates that you turn up with, you're there with actually the 30, 40 lads that have played on that pitch, and it, it's it's a, a rugby community as opposed to a pads and an Wollaton community. So it's, and you're right, if, if that place had a clubhouse, if Wollaton had a clubhouse, it'd be buzzing week in, week out, and and what have you, and it is, it is a shame, and I would hate to see it go back to what it was and, and stuff like that. But yeah. going back to what you said about Ollerton, Ollerton works up and stuff like that, I'd often wonder because I mean, I'm not an outsider now, I've been here eight years, but coming to pay paths and then learning about the, the, 
the view of perhaps other clubs have, mm. I sometimes wonder, is that because it, some of it will stem from the fact that we are successful as a club and, and what have you, but also everyone's buying into the same thing pretty much most of the time. Yeah. Everyone is passionate. And I mean, like any community, any rugby club, any sports club, any business or whatever, people fall out, but people fall out because of the passion. It's not because people want to be difficult. Everyone wants striving to have that same thing. Whereas I wonder if at other clubs that isn't quite the same yeah. because they just don't have that kind of culture. And when you, and like I said earlier about winning is a habit, but there is a, a success. If everyone's buying in, you're successful. But if you're successful, everyone's buying in. So we're at this minute in time, we're lucky as a club. Everyone's going around that same circle. We're successful. We're successful. Everyone want to buy in. We wouldn't have so many seniors turning up and cults turning up for training if we didn't have that buy-in. And there's so many little groups going on to get that success going again um, and continue it going. So, but I, it is it is a shame that other clubs don't have that because if every club in the Midlands had that, then the Midlands would be one of the best places to play rugby. If that oh. is across the country, it'd be it'd be it'd be amazing. But it just doesn't work like that. But um. Yeah. And I'm proud about that, Tom. You know, like, if I'm at work, for example, and, I, and people say to me, what do you do at weekend? I'm playing rugby. Straight away, they ask me, like, even though we're in Mansfield, oh, do you play for Octavius? I'm like, yeah. Mm. It's not, do you play for Mansfield or do you play for Newark? It's always, do you play for Pavius? That's the, it's not like, like, oh, look at us. It's like, we've got a very good reputation. Like, mm. we, 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 it's like we look at the first team, it's all over our boards in the club, isn't it? That they all came through the, the minis and juniors in the Colt system. And like you've got Phil and Nathan teaching them, like their paviors through and through, they've played at brilliant levels and now they're putting their knowledge into our into our kids and eventually they'll be there and they'll just come back, back down and they'll do the same. It's, it's the ethos of the club which has made us so successful. And I, that's what I want for other clubs. Like, I know if they bought into it, they could be a real success and, like, seal their futures for years to come. Because you know for a fact, like, with COVID, you know that Pavis is in really good hands. Like, people who are running it, you, you're not worried that, oh, God, are we going to be all right? Are we going to stay under? It, you know that the people who are running it, they know what they're doing. It's safe. And that's the beauty of Pavias, I think. We just run really well. The members are very passionate about the club. Everyone wants to be involved, from minis and juniors, girls, ladies. Every success, I think. Is what it is. Definitely. We're uh, definitely on that on that right mood to get that kind of success game. But thanks for jumping on with us, Sam. It's uh, been a pleasure to have you on. It's been, it's been great to pick your brain. Um, I won't ask Phil if he has any more questions because he tends not to. Um, told you. But yeah, thanks for coming on. And uh, it's been great. We'll, we'll catch up with you soon. Yeah, no, no. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, pleasure coming on. Like I told you before, we was off here. I'm really nervous. I hope I didn't rab it on too much. But, um, it's all right. Tom can edit, mate. It's fun. <laughs> I can edit. <laughs> I'm, I'm passionate about rugby and... If, you, if if I can instill that passion into other people, then all the best. But thank you for having me on. And, yeah, I think you're doing a great job with the podcast, lads. And, uh, yeah, give me a follow. Cheers, lads. Thank you for your time. The wizard said it. Tell me. <laughs> that was Sam Ward. Um, lots to say for himself. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I thought that was good. I thought, you know, for those who don't know Sam very well, because he has been away from the club for a little bit, um, that will uh, enlighten people about his character, but the kind of person he is, and, and you know, he's going out of his way to a lot for the club at the moment, which is, which is you know, very well received by everyone at the club. Yeah, and he's uh, he's very much a fan of the community game, and he's not as much as he does a lot of work for Pavs. He's still got kind of support in other clubs, which is something you don't often see. Um, Nowadays, but it, it, it's good to have uh, him on. He had a good balance of um, his rugby knowledge and then also the stuff containing Josh Peck, um, which we just leave to another side for our people to enjoy. So we won't won't delve into that. Um, talk about 
halves in the club. On the 26th, we're going to host another touch tournament. Are you there this time, Phil? Are you at Peppa Pig World? I will be. I will be there this time. I uh, can't afford to go to Peppa Pig World again. Uh, I think uh, the plan is that we have a few teams from outside of Pavies involved this time as well. If people are interested or would like to enter a team, then they need to get in touch with uh, with the number we'll provide either at the bottom of this one or next week when we know what the number is. We'll put um, Phil's number up. Yeah, you can put my number up and I'll just pull it on. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think it was quite successful last weekend by the sounds of it. So the more people can get up to the club while we can, um, the better. Yeah, um, it is a case of just bringing up your boots um, or trainers and a bottle of your own water. There is vests and stuff to, to um, buy. Well, there were the last time for pitch up to play, but this one's a bit of a different... But yeah, get there, um, bring your powers, even if they've not played rugby before. But yeah, there's little sessions that we're going to do in the breaks, I think, as well. Um, we didn't touch on it. Just before we go, How is Pep- I want your highlight of Peppa Pig World. Quick leaving. Uh, the, uh, the, it's a nice little place, but, uh, you know, it's a long way to go to, to look at a fake pig. Um, I think... <laughs> The, the highlight for me would have been my daughter's face as we went on a caterpillar roller coaster. Um, my daughter was only three, or was only three at the time, and, and this caterpillar roller coaster was a little bit more aggressive on the downslope than I think I even I perceived. And it kind of <laughs> threw her up out of the seat and she went airborne for a second or two. And she- <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite funny and we've got a good photo of that so uh, yeah <laughs> that's pretty what I like oh that's min I want to go to Peppa Pig World now um, any wise words uh, not today not today one day we'll get wise words right in that case uh, thanks for listening and we will see you next week bye <laughs>